Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Last week's video forecast, it was about McLean's. This week, it's about Webster's. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. And according to Webster's Dictionary, uh, the word social is sometimes uh, something that's marked by uh, pleasant companionship, uh, getting along well with others. And then typically, when you combine that with the word media, which is uh, just a means of communication, it would be TV or print or radio, when you combine those two words, what do you get? A friendly and polite method of interactive communication? Ha! Hardly. For those who would rather get to the fishing report for August 13th to 15th for this weekend, and you don't want to watch the full story about the 15 and a half pound fluke caught on Rare Bay on Friday, by all means, look in the description of this YouTube video and look in the parentheses. You can click on the link, then you can go right past uh, yet another event of mine. But just remember, by doing so, if you skip this little intro, you're going to miss the story about Mark Blazik, another New Jersey fisherman, widely criticized, slandered, and attacked by internet trolls who love to share their facts before asking any questions. So here's the deal. This monster doormat fluke was weighed in at True World Tackle in Bayonne on Friday, August 6th. Now, Akira at True World Tackle there in North Jersey, he said that this monster taped out at 33 and a half inches. It was caught just south uh, of Ambrose Channel. Now, the early reports we had at Facebook, where everybody went nuts, was that this fish was going to be an entry in the Fisherman Magazine's members only dreamboat fishing challenge. Rashawn Williams, don't sweat it. You're still in first place as of this report. Because the captain of the boat, Jeff, he is a Fisherman subscriber. The angler, Mark, as it turns out, was not. Of course, if it were up to the friendly, sociable, and gregarious society on Facebook, this fish would have been decued anyway. Why, you ask? Well, because the experts say that the redness along the white side of this jumbo fluke's belly is a clear indication that this is the product of a dragger, a commercial dragger. Anyway, I stopped in the True World Tackle in North Jersey this week where I found Akira busy at the spooling counter, prepping for another busy week of memorable catches. And it was there inside this Bayonne Tackle Shop where I got a chance to meet and talk to Mark the Angler, Owen the Netman, and Jeff the Captain, who all had this to say about that doormat fluke. So we were drifting in the deep, I'd say at least 70 feet or so. And um, for a while, the current was pretty heavy, sort of getting frustrated because I had to let a lot of line out. Current let up a bit, and I was started jigging the way I like to jig, pretty much straight up and down, just going out a little from the boat. We were getting a couple short hits. I had a hit. I let back on it a little bit and leaned up. It was one of those things where you think you're stuck on the bottom, and the bottom starts moving a little bit. I knew I was into a good one. So I, you know, started reeling him in. I yelled over to the guys, I got a monster on, guys. I got a monster. And at some point during that fight, Jeff had hooked up to another fish uh, that he was fighting in the back. And I had realized at one point I had lighter leader on. I was backing off on the drag, so I was bringing him up. And I noticed those guys were hooked up. I said, get the net ready. Started walking over to where the net was. Jeff was tied into a six-pounder. <laughs> Six pounder came in, his time was going on, I'm getting closer to closer where I needed netted, and they were all fouled up in the net. Ended up cutting the line in the net, putting the net in the water with a six pounder in there, and eventually netting the fish. And I couldn't even see what was going on really because I was up near the bow and they were down in the back, and maybe good thing because I probably would have panicked. <laughs> So. You used a unique rig. It wasn't just a bucktail with a dropper. What did you do special with this rig? I used a bucktail with a double dropper, and the um, droppers were a twisted dropper, where you twist the line so it sticks out mm -hmm. a little, uh, little bit, and I did a double. And this fish came up to the top offering. Have you, have you done that before? So I've never done it. I've been playing around with rigs and decided, you know, they've been coming up to the, you know, the first, first one. I thought, you know what? One is good, two might be better. What was on that top rig that that fluke took? That top rig had a uh, Berkeley Gulp sand eel tipped with a killie. And that's what the big guy was looking for. 
my cousin pulled in a big fish, six pounder. So he's tangled in the net. We couldn't get him out in time. Uh, the other fish was almost out to the top. We, he was ready, you know, we were ready to get the other fish. We didn't have any time, so we cut the line, left, left the big fish in the net, and went in with the six pounder in the net, and the other fish came up to the top, and I thought I was seeing things. I barely got him in the net, this fish was so big. Thank God, because it was barely hooked after we got him in the net, that we got him in. Because the week before, I missed the small fish, and I never heard the end of that fish. So if I would have lost this, I probably wouldn't be fishing to get on that boat ever. Not a lot of people have uh, 21 pounds of fluke in a net at the same time. What was your thought there? Was it I lifted it up. I was like, oh my God, there's a lot of weight here. <laughs> Let's see how much thing, this thing weighs. And I just bought a, a new scale. So we put them on the scale, a handheld scale I had, and it was going between 15 and 16 pounds. I was like, this thing can't be right. The scale can't the be scale, right. The scale, it can't be right. <laughs> I mean, it looked big, but I didn't think it was that big. You know, weight-wise, it was thick. Was it? So we tried measuring on top of the cooler. The cooler is 28 inches, and it was way beyond the 28 inches. It wound up measuring at 33 and a half, I believe it was. So it made the six pounder look like a small fish. <laughs> Put that, 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 that fish in the net, or in the cooler. In the cooler, and his fin's coming up the side of the cooler. He must have been going crazy it, 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 was, it was massive, yeah. It was pretty exciting. Well, the way it went down was, I had that six pounder, I found out that Mark was hooked up to a monster. I'm trying to get my fish in as quickly as possible. Then it turns out that as I get him towards the, the, the top, uh, Mark is now real close with the big fish to the top, so we netted mine very quickly. Then we had to, to make a, a quick decision. It was like a, a fire drill, where basically we just decided we couldn't get him out because the hooks were caught in the net. We uh, cut the, the line, the leader, and then just dropped that six pounder back in the water to, to net the 15 pounder. In the net, so I mean, in the net. drop so, it in the water, but that fish is already in the net. Yeah. Now you yeah. get that other 15 and a half pounds right. in there. What was that fish's behavior when you put it in that cooler? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, when we put them in the cooler, we have you know, quite a bit of ice in the cooler, and then basically the uh, top is uh, popping up and down, and he was just going nuts, absolutely nuts. How so, long did he beat? Uh, I don't know, could have, could have been a half hour or so, and we decided, we, you know, we wanted to weigh him, but we decided to just let him calm down for a while. We waited about an hour, he, he was calm at that point. We weighed him, and I think as Owen said, that uh, we're reading 15 to 16 pounds on his new scale, and I said, no, that's not right. I'm thinking 12, you know? Right. I mean, I've seen some big fish before, but I'm thinking 12. And it, when we brought it on in and weighed out at 15 and a half, I was big fish, real big fish. So do you think the red marks on that tail could have come from that fish spending 30 minutes banging its tail against a cooler that was probably too small to hold 21 and a half pounds of fluke? As we pointed out in the tarpon video last week, regardless of age, sex, or topic, the social media MO is to tap away at the keyboard in attack mode with 110% certainty. And we do this without stopping to ask questions. Shame on us. And no, it's not a tournament entry. Because like I said, while Skipper Jeff is a fisherman subscriber, angler Mark is not, or was not. I went online and immediately subscribed. <laughs> I've been a buyer of the magazine since the 70s when I first started fishing with my dad, and I buy them at newsstands, and I've had subscriptions back in the 70s and 80s, and as soon as I figured out what I missed out on, I immediately went in there and subscribed. <laughs> So who did win those weekend tournaments this past weekend? Well, I'm glad you asked. You had the Fluke Masters on Raritan Bay and the Coastwide Jersey Coast heavy hitters this past weekend. And it was a tournament sweep for Team Fisher, Walt and Kim, husband and wife. Three fish total weight of 22.05 pounds, including Kim's first official doormat, a double digit catch of 10.05 pounds. It's not the first official time that Kim has outfished Walt. <laughs> I'm sure it won't be the last. Sorry, Walt. Congrats, guys, well done. Speaking of tournaments, did you see this one? Uh, this payout, the crew of the boat Sushi took home $3.2 million over the weekend for an 85 and a half pound first place white marlin. No, that's not the tournament purse. That's the single cash payout, $3.2 million. 
these folks may not harvest marlin to eat, but I'll tell you what, you can do well at your local shop right with, with $3.2 million. A little less of a purse, but a little less of an entry as well. If you're looking for a, uh, some tournament cash on the flute grounds this weekend, first you've got the Holiday Beach Club contest. That's out of Waretown this week. That's this Saturday. You can get all the entry details over at Creekside Outfitters in Waretown. That is the official uh, way station for that tournament. And don't forget about the Friendly Sons of the Shillelagh. That's being held out of Belmar. Their 14th annual event this weekend, the captain's meeting is Friday at the Shillelagh Club. That's at 815 16th Avenue in Belmar. You can find all the information about these tournaments as well in the August edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Well, I'll tell you what, the jumbo fluking is heating up rather no nicely. We talked about that deep water rare and stuff because we continue to get some jumbos out of the rare bay, but it looks like we're getting some good fish out of Shark River as well. We heard from Captain Steve on the Skylarker this week. He said Stan Zaremba had an 8.3 pounder aboard the boat earlier this week. I keep getting texts from Steve. It looks like some good fish are being caught. And who says all of New Jersey's doormat fluke come from North Jersey? I, you know, and I've probably said that a lot. But I'll tell you what, you don't have to tell Tim Fitzit, Fitzik of Summers Point about doormat fishing down in South Jersey. He sneaked out before the rain on Saturday off of Ocean City, caught this 30 and a half inch monster that tipped the fanatic scales to the 10.3 pound mark. And that fish was apparently caught at Ocean City Reef. Again, the best bet for keeper fluke uh, and jumbo fluke, bigger fluke, is the deeper water. Uh, I'm not sure how the water temperatures will react this weekend to this rather uh, oppressive uh, stretch of heat that we're getting at the end of this week. But last week, I think it had to do with that new moon, because talk to some people who felt the bite was off for a couple of days, thought maybe we mentioned might have been the upwelling, but maybe it was related to that new moon. Uh, but things definitely seem to rebound uh, by this past weekend, and certainly through this week we're hearing the same thing. I expect good reports from the wrecks and the reef sites in the weekend ahead. Inshore and Back Bay, the new one tog uh, bag limit in New Jersey, has toggers on the sedges, the jetties, the bridge pilings, dropping crab jigs. In fact, the folks at Hands 2 Bait and Tackle in Cape May said there are a few, uh, quite a few keepers in the mix as well. And of course, if you're dropping those tog jigs, whether it's fiddler crabs, sand fleas, uh, shedder crab, green crabs, you're apt to get a sheep's head in the mix as well. Uh, I have heard the reports that the sheep's head action continues to be pretty good uh, throughout the area in Atlantic and Cape May County especially. Um, Delaware too, where the folks at Lewis Harbor Marina they said the icebreakers, they're producing a few sheep's head along the way. In fact, that's where this 10 pounder was caught. Sand fleas, uh, Bill Cordry used this. I believe that is a citation sheep's head that he brought back uh, to Lewis Harbor as well. Jetties and bulkheads will produce a few of those picky summer visitors. If you put your time in, be prepared to fight through the nibbles. I tried something different last week. I, I know that sheep said jump all over live shrimp down in Florida, so I bought a pound of shrimp at the supermarket and took it over to uh, one of my favorite spots. Nibbles the whole time. Shrimp just doesn't hold on very well. Uh, but it's always worth giving it a shot. If you are giving it a shot this weekend in Brigantine, down by the old pier, you're gonna be in for a shock. This comes to us by way of Andy at Riptide Bait and Tackle. He said on Monday night, the old Brigantine Bridge, which is now used as a fishing pier, it fell into the bay. It's not used for a pier anymore. Disappeared forever. You boaters need to be real careful in this area at this point because I'll tell you this old rubble and all these pilings, all this junk, it's not going to be showing up on your Navionics app just yet. So that could be a pretty hairy situation there at the west side of Absecan Inlet. It should make for some interesting tog and sheep's head structure in the future, but just be forewarned and be careful. Again, the north end of the state, historic rubble, uh, those old rock piles, think the tin can grounds as well. Uh, you'll find some porgies in the mix. Hot and cold bite, simple high-low fishing with clam, uh, but when that bite does turn on, the action is pretty solid. Mark Mercer let me know that he and his buddy Mike Krupa were out of Keyport last week just beating up on the scup. So that's a good sign. We'll look at the surf and offshore opportunities for this weekend. But first, let's get a Sweetwater update with my buddy George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. 
Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, it's been one of those crappie weeks. No, not the bad kind, the good kind, the black crappie. I had several guys reporting in saying they are hitting the crappie bite and it is on fire. I'm going to start out west near Harrisburg with good friend Dave Kyle. Dave says he's been getting them out on a small underspin with a little minnow curl tail, and he's been slow trolling them uh, about 12 to 15 feet of water and really getting to some good numbers of crappie. Uh, here's a nice spread of his out there and even better here's what it looks like after it hit the deep fryer dave i'm biting myself over for dinner for sure great work there now we're still talking about the crappie over here in the poconos and southern pennsylvania we had eric goodstall out getting into some of the same crappie as well eric ties a lot of his own t uh, flies and his own jigs so i know he was getting on them with the jig as well now across the river in jersey we had good friend jen wong jen was getting on the crappie same thing getting on those jigs and the crappie bite has been on fire. Now, while I was talking to Jen about those those uh, those crappie, he says, George, the bass bite is still going strong. Him and friend Rachel Waka both out getting on some beautiful largemouth. A couple different tactics, though. Jen says he's out using the, the topwater jerk baits uh, with a little bit of that lip glue on there, and that's been working real good for him. Rachel, on the other hand, has been using the, the Texas rig worm, slowing it down with a little ribbon tail worm and a nice slow presentation the girl's on fire. Little tip from Rachel, don't kiss the bass, they might kiss back. So just some good advice there. Now, talking about the river, since we skipped over that, uh, I got with my good friend Tim Keeble, river guide, and I said, Tim, is there anything happening on the river? He says, George, the striper bite is still on. There are a lot of leftover stripers in the area, but you really got to want them. They're a little tough to catch. He goes out there with those top waters, and I think one of those new gulps with the paddle tail, on a jig head is going to be real productive for these finicky stripers in the river. Lots of stuff to do, guys. We're in the 90s this coming weekend. Try to stay cool, but get out and get on them. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. Our Beach Talk reporter, Nick Honicheski, said he's been doing a bang-up job in the wash, on the fluke, on some of his guided trips. And in his weekly uh, forecast for the Fisherman.com this week, he said, quote, fluke, Chopper blues, kingfish, blowfish, triggerfish, blackfish, and the occasional Spanish mackerel are contributing to the surf medley. Surf medley, that's what we've got in the middle of this summer. And depending on the time, the tide, and your specific beach location this week, Nick say, said he wouldn't be surprised if somebody might stumble into a cobia or two. Uh, certainly some more of those exotics, like those Spanish mackerel that we talk about. Nick said, uh, oh, maybe a marlin or a tuna will come into the suds again. Bite your tongue, Nick. I don't know if I can handle uh, another tarpon report at this time. You've got the white marlin invitational. It's gone on this week out of Beach Haven, out of Beach Haven Inlet, uh, actually out of a couple of different inlets, but it's based out of that uh, Beach Haven Marlin and Tuna Club. So you can imagine that the offshore reports are a little bit slim because everybody goes into a big tournament weekend like this with a lot of tight lips. Though tournament director Dave Wittenborn, he said on Wednesday that the forecast has turned favorable for the three days of fishing. There's beautiful Gulf Stream water pushing into the Spencer Canyon that they expect to have 65 boats running in that contest this week. Now, our intrepid offshore reporter Tom P said the 2021 season is about yellowfin at the Atlantic Princess. That's supposed to what the yellowfin season in 2020 was out at the triple wrecks. He did say that the reser is chipping in with some good numbers as well, while the mid-range lumps continue as hotbeds for bluefin, mostly those unders. The canyons, according to Tom, producing yellowfin and big eye with swordfish also on the menu as well. Now, Wahoo are making a play predominantly at those southern areas, those southern canyons, but we expect they'll be hitting the decks in the more northerly areas by middle of this month. Mahi numbers and sizes are strong around the canyon pots and also around the mid-range surface debris, uh, some of that surface debris, uh, we're getting some decent reports in the mud hole as well. Tilefish, particularly goldens, are adding to the mix. For those of you on the deep drop, just want to remind you, however, 
you need a special tile fish permit. On top of your HMS permit, you gotta get that special tile fish permit, and you're also gonna be responsible for reporting those catches of tile fish. Uh, a real strong reminder comes uh, by way of the New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife. This report just came out last week, but they had a bust back in May. So if you guys are going out for tile fish, just make sure that you're up uh, to speed on what you need to know and that special tile fish permit and the reporting procedures because you don't want to get busted coming in with a bunch of fillets this one was a little over the limit, obviously, but that just shows you that they're out there looking around. Midweek forecast from NOAA for the offshore grounds this week. Uh, it's especially good for those who aren't running tournaments because it looks best for Sunday. Good chance to hit those mid-range and offshore grounds. So definitely catch them up this weekend. And remember, be being social. That's being polite and courteous. So post those posts wisely, my friends. Hey, I'll leave you with our Coastal Kayak Clash update from my buddy, Dave Anderson. This week in the Coastal Kayak Clash, we saw a lot of entries and a big shakeup at the top of the leaderboard. You may remember that we have been locked in a three-way tie for a few weeks now. Well, that tie has been broken, sort of. Bob Stuber came out of left field to take over the first place spot by logging the top entries for Sea Robin and Weakfish this week giving him six points and locking him into a tie with Justin Oser for the lead, only hanging on to the top spot because his largest fish is larger than Oser's largest fish. In the process, Gary Innes' score was reduced to four, knocking him out of contention for now. Bob Wagner's score was also reduced to four, but he hangs on to third place by the inches afforded by his 36-inch bluefish. Albert Green has also entered the mix, logging a first-place blackfish and a third-place sea bass, giving him four points and putting him well within striking distance of the top spot. There's still a lot of time left in the tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a ball game. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious anglers choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.